Right, let's see who's here. Oh, Abby and George. Here we go. Ah, good morning, everybody. Good, good morning, morning Miss Coleman. Right, everybody, today we're going to be learning about something super special and mysterious. Now, for this, I need a drum roll, please. Shall I share my screen? And it is the Royal Armouries 133 manuscript. Can I get a ooh? ooh. Can I get a ah? Ah. Now it was made in Germany in the early 1300s, and it is a fighting manual. Hey George, do you need a pen? Oh yeah, please go on. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's quite enough of that. Thank you very much indeed. Back to the manuscript. Now you can see in the manuscript that there's lots of text and images showing somebody how to fight with a sword and a buckler. Now if you look at the sword here from the Royal Armouries collection, you can see it's very similar to that one that was used in the manuscript. And if you have a look at this buckler, it's actually from 300 years later. It's from the 1600s instead of the 1300s, but they are really similar. That's a tiny shield, miss. Absolutely right, right, George, it certainly is. That's because the main job of the buckler is to protect the hand holding the sword. The sword and the buckler are often held closely together, you see. You would be a pretty rubbish sword fighter if you didn't have any hands. Ah, you would, actually. But here's the mystery. All the way through, there's two men demonstrating the moves, a priest and a scholar. But just at the last minute, a lady named Walpurgis takes the place of the scholar and is shown fighting the priest. George, will you please mute yourselves? What's even more strange is that we don't know anything about her other than her name. We don't know how she got there. We don't know where she came from. We don't know who she is. So that's going to be our job today, to create a story on how Walpurgis arrived in the 133 manuscript. This is a mystery of history, so let's create a story. Who wants to start? Five minutes later. Yes, George. Well, what if Walpurgis is a scholar's sister? Oh, yes, Volpergus and her brother, the scholar, Geoffrey, let's call him, they lived in the monastery with the priest. Yeah, but the house was destroyed by a dragon, you see, but it's all right because they escaped on Walpurgis' magical unicorn, Princess Jojo. Well, that's, that's very nice, but if we could get back to the real world... It's it Volpergus' birthday, so she was enjoying her special breakfast of pancakes, you know, made by the ever-so-talented Mrs Dumpling. <gasps> and she had been told she could choose any activity she wanted to do that day, and she decided she wanted to go trampolining. Yeah, but first they had to go to Geoffrey's sword fighting class. Apparently someone was coming to a sketch for some sort of manual. Yeah, yeah, and so on the back of Princess Jojo, they went to practice. And while Purvis was watching as Geoffrey got beaten again and again by Bruce, you know, the priest. Isn't that very nice? But... Purvis was getting really bored, so she started copying the moves, you know. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, and then all of a sudden, Geoffrey twisted his ankle. Ouch! He screamed. Whoever could help? Well, well, this was the moment that Volpergus had spent the last 20 minutes training for. Finally, her time had come. That's, that's very nice. Well, 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 Volpergus was feeling brave and she volunteered herself. And that's how the last pages of the 133 manuscript were finished. Alas, trampolining was off because of Geoffrey's ankle. But don't be upset. We can always try archery, Volpergus said. So they decided to have an archery competition with flaming arrows and a crowd of fairies gathered around to watch and cheer the siblings on. After the competition was over, they sprinkled fairy dust around so that a magnificent feast appeared with cake and ice cream. And once the feast was over, the fairies flew Walpurgis and Geoffrey back to their home so that they could tell Mrs Dumpling, Princess Georgia and Bruce all about their incredible adventure. Uh, 
Um, yes, well, very imaginative children, well done. But um, you should know that for this time in history, it was quite strange to see a lady and a priest uh, fighting. They were from two very different classes. And in fact, it was quite strange to see a lady holding a sword at all. Quite odd. But why? Yeah, women fence all the time now. Well, it wasn't really considered a lady's place. They were meant to uh, be seen and not heard. <laughs> Silly. Come on, George. Bring it on! Come at me, bro. Well, will you two meet <laughs> yourselves and start behaving? While these two sort themselves out, how about the rest of you? Uh, why don't you write your stories? Um, who is Walpurgis? Who? How did she end up in the manuscript? Be as detailed as you would like and use your imaginations. Probably better than these two, anyway. Um, remember, it is a mystery of history, so you can't be wrong. But once you've written your stories, send them in to me, and I would love to be able to read all of your imaginative stories. What are you two doing? Now, this video is dedicated to our primary school partners that are involved in the Mightier Than the Sword Literacy Project. That's Hillcrest, Richmond Hill and St Joseph's Catholic Primary School. I hope that everybody in these schools are doing fantastically well. Now we cannot wait to invite you guys back into the museum next academic year to continue the fight for literacy. We'll see you then at the Mightier Than The Sword Literacy Project.